Hello Vortex. I just wanted to show you what I just found in the drive-thru. And, and, and three pennies. A dollar and three cents. It's funny, like, so many people are struggling with, uh, you know, financial problems right now. And just gotta think outside the box. Who's responsible for giving us boxes to think inside of? Could it possibly be in the institutions and all the pieces of crap that sell us stuff that's gonna kill us? Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> I always say food for thought if you're up to eating, but most people don't want to eat thoughts, you know? They would much rather eat GMOs. <laughs> but I gotta admit something to you, Vortex. I used to be a thief. Like, really, really bad. <laughs> and the reason why I was a thief, I guess I could blame borderline personality because most borderlines lie all the time. It's what they do to get by. It's what they do to rationalize their horrible behaviors. And I would lie to myself about stealing and I would say that people owed me that or I'd think that, you know, taking from a corporation was okay because they were a corporation and I'll be honest, I still kind of feel that way. <laughs> my sentiment hasn't changed but my behavior definitely has. If you've watched one of my previous channels, you might distinctly remember a video where I was encouraging people to steal from the Walmart. Um, I mean, it's okay when fringe identity groups do it, you know? <laughs> it's funny how many will make excuses for certain people doing certain things that are really bad. Like, if it's a rule, it needs to be a rule that applies to everybody, not just one group of people, you know? Because if something is wrong, that means it's just wrong indefinitely. That's a principle. You know, a lot of these people aren't principled and so they think that stealing is okay. I'll be the first to tell you that stealing is not okay, even if it seems like it is. Because if you steal, you're going to have to live with that for the rest of your life, you know? And I think about how blessed I am, and it just makes me cry because I feel like I don't deserve any of this, and that, you know, I was such a horrible person for so long because I allowed myself to be a horrible person and I made all kinds of excuses as to why my behaviors were okay and like I said about borderline personalities they lie all the time and so that was my way of lying I did stuff that I had to lie about I did stuff that required me to have to you know cover up certain aspects of my life it was like I felt like I was I was living a double life I was a con artist. And I feel like most people are con artists. But the reason why I couldn't go along with it was because I have too much of a yelling, flailing conscience. And I'm way too spiritual of a person to keep rationalizing that stealing is okay just because, you know, the big people do it to the little people. I mean, they really do. But just because I hate corporations doesn't make it okay for me to steal from them because, you know, oh, what they do is wrong. You know, I've said it, well, two wrongs don't make it right, but a, a thousand wrongs. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, it's important that we admit the things that we've done, and that's the only way that we can experience true salvation is if we come to terms with the, the bad parts of ourselves, and we admit those bad parts of ourselves. So many people, I, I can't help but notice, um, will, you know, delete old videos or, you know, content that, that isn't politically correct now or whatever. Um, and here's the thing, it doesn't matter. All this politically correct bullshit doesn't matter. Look at Ralph Northam, okay? He can do whatever he wants <laughs> because he's a Democrat. You know, like all of their politically correct rules only apply to certain people, which is precisely why I said 
equality. You have to apply the principles of equality to principle. So if it's wrong for a Republican to put people's needs aside for their own personal gain, then it's wrong for a Democrat to do that as well. And the biggest problem in this country, well, let's not say that. I don't, I don't think that you can say the biggest problem in this country because there's so many problems in this country and I feel like they are all equally problematic, you know, like, and it's all those problems combined that are making this so terrible for so many people. Now, a lot of times, you know, it's the mindset that people have. It seems like, it seems like a lot of people just want to be enslaved. It's like, they don't know what, what the concept of freedom really is, you know, because you can be free, you can be living in a free country. A lot of people think that freedom means owning a firearm. Uh, <laughs> no, I would say that freedom, true freedom, is saying I'm going to own a firearm whether I'm allowed to or not. You know, I feel like that's true freedom. True freedom is saying fuck you and your stupid ass system, I'm going to do what I want. And of course, you know, of course there's that possibility that you're going to get in trouble for doing what you want. I guess it just depends on what you want to do. But the reason why, you know, my relationship with God is so very strong is because, you know, I have a lot to forgive. A lot. And if if he can forgive me for the horrible, wretched piece of trash that I was. And he can forgive you for being a liberal. I promise. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like I said, I'm like, I'm a liberal at heart. Yeah, you really, you, it's like bleeding heart liberal with the mind of a conservative. That's the best way to be, folks. <laughs> you you got to be a mix, you know? You got to be a mutt. Like a political mutt. That's like the only way that you'll be smart about anything is if you're a political mutt. Who wants to just be one thing anyway? That's so boring. It really is. And I meet people all the time that are this way. And it varies. Like, what makes a person boring? Sometimes it's their politics. Sometimes it's their, you know, obsession with uh, their identity. Sometimes they're, you know, they're so caught up in, in what they think they're supposed to do or what they think they're supposed to want. I mean, do you have any idea how many people, like, that they always ask me, like, why don't you have kids? I'm like, well, I saw, I saw this world. <laughs> and I said, uh, I don't want to raise kids in this world. And you can say that's lame, but I know they get taken away by the state. And that would be a dead social worker right there, you know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> I'm saying... I, I don't think that I'm meant to have kids. Like, I've thought about this a lot, because I know I'd be a good mom. I know I'd be very nurturing. And I know I'd teach them right from wrong. Because I've done a lot of wrong. But I'm not really a good example of like what a mother should be anyway, and that's not just because of my views on drugs. It's it's mainly because of, you know, uh, I'm too crazy. Like I'm I'm not really stable, so it it doesn't make sense why I would have children. I, I wish I could have convinced a lot of women <laughs> to stop having unprotected sex. 
Because I just think about all these kids that are just raised in the dark, essentially. And let me tell you something. If you're a parent, or not be, you call yourself a parent, but you're really just a self-esteem holder-upper, and you give your kid a pill bottle, and you give your kid a cell phone, and you sit your kid in front of the television all day, That you're not, you're not being a parent, you know? You gotta spend time with your kids. I mean, I spend time with other people's kids, and they're so happy to see me because, you know, I actually... Well, I think a lot like them, too. I'm, I'm very childlike, in case you guys haven't noticed that. But it's like... I listen to them. I also treat them like adults, too, and that's another thing. You, I think we should start treating adults like kids. I mean, they're already doing it with this communist shit, but, like, yeah, they're, uh... That, that's why you have all these adults wearing masks. You know, they're so obedient. I mean, I do it because I have to in my workplace, you know. There's there's really not an option. And, like I said, I can, I can talk to myself, so that's cool. So you gotta see the perks of every situation, but it's like, if you don't have to fucking don't. You know, it's as simple as that. But it's like I can't stand it when I'm around adults who treat their kids like shit. And it, it's like, why are you whooping your kid's ass just because they're energetic and they ask you a bunch of questions like that's what they're supposed to be doing they're a child it's like so many people just don't understand like what things are you know <laughs> like like this for example this is a tub of coffee okay according to politically correct people it's a uh, uh, I, I don't know, uh, it's a tree, you know, um, <laughs> but like, this is where we're, where we're going, you guys, like, you want to laugh at that, but it's like, I was trying to warn people that when it came to the N-word, the N-word, people were going to start treating other words the same way, which proves that it was never about black people, it was never about the, the word itself, it was never about the historical connotation. It's always been about these piece of shit white liberals in the university telling people what they can and cannot say and you have to hold up a poster and scream a chant in order to get college credit and I know because I took a women's studies class and that's what we had to do. Women's studies. <laughs> the study of women. I mean, how arrogant! How arrogant is that shit? Anyway. I used to get in fights with the feminists. I was a flaming liberal at the time, and I didn't get along with them then. And I've done comedy with liberals. These, these twat bots. I call them twat bots because they're not feminine. But they're not funny, they're not interesting, they're not right about anything, and yet they want everybody to keep listening to them. It's like you can't even figure out your menstrual cycle and you want to tell everybody else what to do. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, figure out ovulation first, okay? And then you can tell other people what to do, okay? Okay, just do me a favor. Figure out, I bleed from this point to that point, and then you can tell men not to spread their legs in the subway, okay? Because it interferes with your massive collection of crap that you wanna you wanna put on an entire seat because you're such a selfish cunt, okay? <laughs> I mean, really and truly, I mean, all these people just—they're so full of crap, man, all of them.
And I'm not talking to women in the vortex that aren't feminists, okay? Congratulations. If you're a woman and you're not a feminist, congratulations. You've made it. <laughs> anyway. Who is that? Oh, that's my coworker. I went about freaked out. I was like, who is that, man? my liberal friend. <laughs> All right. I'll be back.